I'm Dean Atwell. I'm and you're watching Fraser Focus. Local faces. And local places. Let's check out today's show. We meet our weekly Zippy Zuma, a talented 69-year-old children's entertainer, Susie. Should you deprescribe? Why some pharmacists think you may be taking too many medications. Award-winning singer Brian Dirksen shares his faith and his music. We profile a volunteer contributing to the Langley Seniors Resource Society over the last 25 years. Lots in store for us today. On with the show. Fraser Focus, a fresh perspective beyond the bridge. local faces and local places with 25 years of volunteer work in the kitchen faith has been an integral part of the langley yes. senior resource society and it's her very last day today yep yeah this is your coffee okay. you lady come in your black coffee yeah. faith uh, brings the dishes in cleans them puts them through once they're over there she'll put them away faith does the dishes that's her main task and if she catches up on the dishes, then we have her cleaning the counters, washing the walls. Wow. And I've worked with you for about 20, haven't I? Yeah. 20 years. So you've been here a long time yourself. So how is Faith? She gets along with everybody here. She's very social. She talks to the customers out here. Disney, you said goodbye. Yeah. yeah. Loyal kitchen worker for us for 25 years. 25 years she's been here? Yes. Today is her last day, unfortunately, but she's done a great job for us, and we're very proud of Faith. Yeah. Your last day here. Yes. Are, you, are you excited? Yes. You've done a great job for us. Yeah. Now who's going to take over? I'm doing dishes. Put her to work, Faith. Nice work. Okay, what do I do? Yeah. Faith, do I spray it off? Yeah, the show off. Well, we're not sure. We've got some other kitchen staff that probably have to pick up her duties and pick up her slack. Well, I tried taking over uh, and being the replacement, but I'm terrible, so we're going to have to find somebody else. Well, I'm Thank sure you. we'll see you here again. So okay. this is your last shift. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I feel like good. Good, yeah? Yes. You're, you're, you're ready to retire? Yes. Yeah, how old are you? Am I allowed to ask? 59, my birthday, and it's like Saturday. 59, so you've been at this a while, though. Yeah. You excited for retirement? Yeah. The dining okay. room. Okay, dining room duties. Here we go. We're busting tables. Not only is it 25 years for Faith, 25, 25 years. 25 years for the center. November the 2nd, we're going to have coffee and cake for anyone who wants to drop in at the center. And it's the celebration of our 25th anniversary. We even got our little sign there. So Tom mm -hmm. Douglas was my father-in-law. Wow. Who, okay. when Sharon Burney had the dream of uh, building a senior center, uh, Tom Douglas went out and got all the financing. Yeah. So he got this place going, Lyle Brock, Sharon Burney, and all the staff. We rely on donations to keep this place running. And it is run by a large number of volunteers. Keeps the center doors Just open. Just like Faith. One of the volunteers. Yeah. yeah. Fellow volunteers. Yeah. Yes, just like Faith, who we are celebrating today. We took pictures last week of her with all her friends. 25 years she's been here volunteering in the kitchen, and we are going to miss Faith. Yes. Yeah. So what kind of cake are you having? Gluten-free? Yeah. Yeah. Gluten-free. Yeah. Just like me. <laughs> you want to miss her? Yes, we are. Say goodbye. Oh, we'll this say is you. my son and my 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 boss. Doing the special meals? Yeah. Sweet. How long you guys work together? Uh, four years. Four yeah. years? Yeah. You yeah. give them a hard time the whole time? Oh yeah, yes. all the time. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the last thing for me. Don't don't get teary eyes. <laughs> no, they need a happy minute. Fine. You want a dog TV? 
Okay, fine. I gotta do these too? Oh no. No, 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 they're clean. Oh, these are clean. See, I almost messed everything up here. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep trying to wash the dishes here. Stay with us here on Freezer Focus. Keep watching. When you start taking more than three different medications at a time, your risk of number one drug interactions goes way up. Razor Focus is brought to you by the Chambers of Commerce Group Insurance Plan, Canada's number one plan for employee benefits. The impact of having all those drugs, yes. you really don't have much of a recollection of it at all. Not really, no. No. A growing number of medical professionals are urging Canadians to take a closer look at their medications, warning that some combinations of prescriptions may be doing more harm than good. When you start taking more than three different medications at a time, your risk of number one drug interactions goes way up. So that by the time you're taking five different prescription drugs or even some over-the-counter medications, you're at risk for a drug-drug interaction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to shoot. Oh, my goodness. How old was your father when he started taking a, you know, a few more medications? Um, I think he was probably in his uh, 40s or 50s. Um, high blood pressure runs in the family. And so he probably started on blood pressure medications first and then antidepressants. I have, uh, I have uh, four kids from my... Um, Carolyn, who I married in 1960, Kelly is one, John, Stephen, and Kelly Shannon. Was, uh, we arrived in London in 1950. Talk to me about what happened. I mean, your father seems to have a loss of recollection. Oh, well, yes. He, he had um, acute kidney failure due to over-medication and acute dehydration. One of the things we have a mandate for is to reduce prescription drugs. The biggest thing we start reducing is from blood pressure medication. Think of it, if you have too low a blood pressure, then your ability for the blood to flow to the brain is potentially reduced, and it may make you dopey, drowsy, uh, low blood pressure uh, on a regular basis can increase your risk of falls. So if you're in your 60s, 70s, 80s, you know a risk of falls, you want to avoid that. Many people in their 80s or 90s, if you fall 50% of the time at the end of six months, you're no longer here. Finish everything in there, and you should feel better, and. 24 to 48 hours. Okay. Okay. I have a client, a patient. They're, they were, you know, 77 years old. He did have those symptoms. I said, it's, you know, important. You go back to your doctor, tell your doctor that you're experiencing this. Next thing you know, they reduced the dose by half. So when he visited me again, which was just a few days, the doctor had reduced the dose by half. So not completely taking him off. And it's important for people not just to stop taking Absolutely. You can't make that decision yourself, but explaining it to your doctor, your health professional, uh, that's really important. This is information about your prescription, how it's going to help you, what the adverse effects are. I think there should be some uh, personal responsibility allowed. People should be able to see what their medications are. Um, we've got Dr. Google handy. We can look up things and see what's going on and have ask questions. Be better informed. Bringing you stories that are often overlooked by mainstream media. You're watching Fraser Focus. Stay with us. Do you know what microblading is? Yes, I do. Oh, okay, so what have you heard about it? I actually have it done. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I didn't even, I, I can't even can't tell. can't even tell, right? Growing in popularity over the past few years, microblading has become the go-to procedure to get those perfect eyebrows, even for celebrities like Oprah. So you're ready for your touch-up? I'm really ready for my touch-up. <laughs> I am looking forward to it. It's Five years ago is when you first tried yes, it out, right? That's right. I wanted eyebrows and I wanted to have consistency in my eyebrows so that they look natural. Everything gets symmetrical. Consequently, tattooing seemed to be the answer. And I catch You can always make adjustments in terms of the color, the general shape and size of your eyebrows. We can tweak things, we can change things. All the stroke marks, they'll stay within these lines here. We also did a lot of uh, like schooling and testing with it and we had examples of things to show of how natural it can look. It actually just looks like hair. 
one of the two numbing creams that I use. We do one as soon as she comes in. A lot of the go. staff, almost most of the staff have had it done and they just love the, the convenience of not having to draw them on every day. Yeah, I got them done for like working out, not smudging at the pool, water parks, stuff like that. You can't, it's hard to do when you're not confident enough in having no eyebrows, it really helps. Covering the region from Delta to Hope. You're watching Fraser Focus. I actually do love music just for music's sake too. Yes. I mean, I'm a person of faith, but I, I don't believe that every song you sing has to be about your faith. It's about your humanity. You're watching Fraser Focus, local faces and local places. We are here in the Fraser region with award-winning singer-songwriter Brian Dirksen. Welcome to our Turn It Up segment. Christian, inspirational folk rock music in the style that I do. And confused, I actually do love music just for music's sake, too. Yes. I mean, I'm a person of faith, but I, I don't believe that every song you sing has to be about your faith. It's about your humanity. It's about your, your, your need for love or, or processing pain or disappointment in your life or telling a story. What was it like to hear these words on that Sunday morning? I'm doing a concert in my hometown, which is always so much fun because I, I do events in different parts of the world, but be able to come home and do an event with my band that tours with me is great. We're doing a concert to benefit Bethesda, who uh, helps adults with special needs in our community. And this is very close to home for me because my wife and I, Hi. of our six children, three are special needs and require support. Isaiah, he's got Fragile X syndrome and Benjamin, our older son, has the same condition, Fragile X. In the middle of this pain, uninvited loss and not knowing what comes next your peace should go to four four there brian dirksen we're really excited to partner with him um, in doing a fundraising event for our family support services family support is kind of a baseline service that families need um, that have children with disabilities at home they often feel isolated because government funds uh, services for people with disabilities, but not necessarily for families. So we fill in the gap with uh, donation funded services to support families. In. And he's been a huge part of the fabric of Abbotsford most of his life. Um, and so he's well known here as well. So it's gonna be exciting to have him come back for a concert. I have known songs, obviously, that people know and love from me over years that we'll be doing, but I've got a new album out called Grateful. And I get the privilege of working on more of the coordination part of the concert, so trying to pull together all of the people and the tasks and make sure the day runs as smoothly as possible. Album, including my current single, which is called If Jesus is the Face of God. All right, here we go with your new single, Brian. If Jesus is the face of God, we have seen the face of love. Brian will be performing a concert in Abbotsford on November the 3rd. Because we know that God believes in us. You're watching Fraser Focus. Stay with us. Oh, Jesus is the face of God. We have heard forgiveness call. You're watching Fraser Focus. 
It's all about local places and local faces. We're hanging out here at Derek Doubleday Park. Keep watching. <laughs> Celebrating iconic classic rock bands, Canafest returned to Grand Forks for its fourth year, this time with partial proceeds going towards the devastating floods that took place earlier in the year. We figured that the river was probably going to flood. We were watching it. So when it started breaching the banks, we started sandbagging the lower houses, and it just kept coming and coming and coming. Uh, they are finally coming in, and Hazmat has to take out everything that I own in the basement because everything, there was about nine feet of water in the basement. The Grand Forks was hit with the worst floods in BC history earlier in the year, and many of the people here tonight and this weekend are absolutely homeless. They have nothing, no businesses, no homes. They're still living in hotels. We've already raised over 40000 and we're hoping to raise another $50,000 this weekend to donate locally. So happy to be here in this com community that's so resilient. You know, they went through some horrible times in the spring with the flooding and that, and they're tougher than you can possibly imagine. So it's, we're celebrating Grand Forks, and we're celebrating Canada. This is about recovery because there's a lot of money coming out of this show and uh, you know we the town is like less than 5,000 people. Canifest swells it, brings in an extra maybe 10, 15,000 people. That's 10 or 15,000 people that are spending money here. Grand Forks is a special place. This is why we come. Bands here perform to sold out crowds and Canifest promises to be bigger, bolder and better for next year. I'm Dean Atwell and you're watching Fraser Focus. bring that out with you everywhere? No, but for this show we do. With 69 years of entertainment under her belt, let's introduce this week's Zippy Zoomer, Susie. You want to have a bit of fun, come and join us. Okay. We love doing this. I love getting kids involved and people as well. And it's not easy when you're thrown in somewhere and you've got recorded music. So you try and improvise. Okay, boys and girls, are you ready for some fun? Yeah. No, I said, are you ready for some fun? Yeah. We do a lot of senior shows. We go to hospitals, uh, residences. We go wherever they want us. We've, we've done theater work. We've done conventions. We do shows for legions. We do shows all over the place, yeah. He looks so much like my boyfriend. <laughs> Tell them apart. And I'm doing a segment on uh, Susie there. Is she a little crazy? Oh, yes. absolutely. You have to be. Yeah. <laughs> to do this. You have to be. Nice. Yeah. There was a little girl wanted to meet the horse. Did she come over and meet you? Yes. Oh, well, we, we introduced her. Oh, yeah. good. Our horses to lots of kids. Oh, good. And How was it working with her? <laughs> well, it was David. It was wonderful. She's like a daughter. Oh, yes, I wonder when the road is called up yonder. Will the angels? Don't you get tired? No, it's fun. It really is fun. I enjoy myself tremendously. And besides uh, the theater, any other crazy things you're doing these days? I make toys. What? Here we go. I got my hat on for back in the saddle again. Gonna join these ladies. Yeehaw! Fantastic. Covering the region from Delta to Hope. You're watching a Fraser Focus. Teachable Moments are brought to you by Doyle & Associates Private Wealth Management with Investors Group Financial Services Incorporated. What do you consider the most important money life skills for kids going to university? I guess they should know their monthly expenditure, how much they need minimum. 
Uh, I believe that it's important for kids to learn to um, maybe to work for their own money. If they're working for their own money, they'll probably spend it in a different way. How important do you think it is to let kids do as much of their real life living as they can, like paying bills or rent? Oh, it's hugely important because you only learn by doing. <laughs> oh, I would say that's very important right from the beginning. When it comes to talking with your kids about money, are there some areas you feel should be off limits? I guess, you know, our RSP and stuff, retirement money, no, that's off limit. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Do you think it's important for young adults going to university to have a good idea what things cost? If they just grow up all the way to 18 and they have no idea how much things cost, it's going to be a pretty difficult reality when they get out there and need to spend their own money. Would you agree with this statement? If parents aren't talking with their kids about family finances or debts, the kids are drawing their own conclusions, which may not be accurate. I totally agree. Totally agree. Yes, yes, they need to know. As many parents know, tuition is only part of the cost of going to university. Not to be forgotten are rent, groceries, travel, books and entertainment. Yes, entertainment. And extracurricular activities. For students living at home, costs can be almost half of those who move away. So where does the money come from to pay for school? Of the ways to fund school, consider the following. Money from parents or grandparents, personal earnings, student loans, scholarships and bursaries, and not to be forgotten, are ESPs, or Registered Education Savings Plans. But make sure you choose the right plan. Student debt may be an enticing option, but the financial impact it leaves on many graduating students has a much longer legacy than many students had planned on. Like a good retirement plan, your children's education requires specific planning. Namely, what's it going to take to make it happen and the steps you need to take to get there. Speak to your financial planner to develop a plan to make your education goals a reality. Teachable Moments are brought to you by Doyle & Associates Private Wealth Management with Investors Group Financial Services Incorporated. And that wraps up another edition of Fraser Focus, local places and local faces. If you guys have a story to tell, don't forget to contact us. You can give us a call, send us an email, or there's always social media. Joy TV, BC. I'm Dean Atwell. And I'm Leah Bolton. Thanks for watching.